London Bridge is at the very heart of the capital, and at the northern end is a historic building known as Fishmonger's Hall. It was here in November 2019 that a Cambridge University charity decided to hold a prisoner rehabilitation event. On the morning of 29th of November, the delegates attended a brunch at Fishmonger's Hall, during which a charity volunteer, 23-year-old Saskia Jones, chatted with Usman Khan. She couldn't have known that a few hours later, he would fatally stab her in the neck. This is London Crime Stories, and I'm Chris Summers. This week, we're looking at the danger posed by terrorists when they're released from prison. Behind me is the Fishmongers Hall, which is quite a prestigious and historic building. And on that day, it had been rented out by Learning Together, which is a, a prisoner rehabilitation charity based at Cambridge University. Uh, they were holding an event here, uh, just inside that doorway, um, for ex-prisoners, uh, one of whom, of course, was Usman Khan. During the event's lunch break, Usman Khan went to the toilets on the ground floor of the building. Ten minutes later, he attacked another volunteer, Jack Merritt, with two knives strapped to his hands. Jack, who was only 25, received 12 stab wounds. Khan then ran to the cloakroom area, where he stabbed Saskia Jones once in the neck. Jack and Saskia were both fatally injured. Usman Khan was born and raised in Stoke-on-Trent in the Midlands, and was arrested in 2010 with eight others. All supported the Islamic terror group Al-Qaeda, who'd been responsible for the 9-11 attacks. Khan was convicted of a series of terrorist offences, including being part of a plot to bomb Parliament and the London Stock Exchange. A judge described him as one of the more serious jihadis, who had a higher level of commitment than some of his co-defendants. He was jailed for 16 years, but was freed after just eight. After his release from prison, Khan was put in touch with Learning Together, a charity based at Cambridge University, which worked on prisoner rehabilitation. In November 2019, Khan, who was unemployed and living in the Midlands, was invited to attend an event here at the Fishmongers Hall in central London. An inquest jury was later told that MI5, which secretly monitored Khan, had earlier prevented him from taking a course to learn how to drive garbage trucks because of fears of the damage he could cause but they raised no red flags about his visit to London on the 29th of November and did not even assign a surveillance team to watch him. Khan travelled by train to London wearing a fake suicide vest under his coat and carrying several large knives in his rucksack. Learning Together and the Fishmongers Hall were later criticised for not having a metal detector or any form of security at the entrance. After he arrived at the event, Khan kept his coat on he sat through various speeches, he queued up for food. After he attacked Jack and Saskia, he was confronted by a group of men that included convicted murderers Steve Gallant and John Creeley. They were also attending the event. Creeley hit Khan with a chair and chased him outside, spraying him with a fire extinguisher. Creeley and Gallant were then joined by civil servant Darren Frost, who had armed himself with a narwhal tusk he had pulled from the wall of the fishmonger's hall. It was at this point that Usman Khan uh, fell to the ground uh, as he was confronted by the men uh, surrounding him. The police pulled up in several armed response cars and rushed over to the scene. Seeing the men confronting Khan, uh, they asked them to back away uh, as they saw his uh, what turned out to be a fake suicide vest. They were also worried about people below the, the bridge uh, so they were asking, you know, everybody to step away. Uh, they tasered Khan, um, but then realised that he was, you know, he possessed a, a major danger if he triggered that suicide vest. Uh, and then they shot him and shot him dead. The Fishmongers Hall attack was shocking, but to some extent, people in central London had become used to terrorist incidents. But shoppers in Streatham in South London never expected themselves to be targeted by terrorists. On the 2nd of February 2020, a man suddenly rushed out of a hardware shop, grabbing a kitchen knife from the display. 
The man was 20-year-old Sudesh Aman. Aman suddenly grabbed a large kitchen knife from the display in one of the shops, uh, ran out into the street and began stabbing people on the street. Uh, who, you know, people minding their own business. Suddenly, out of nowhere, armed police officers arrived and began chasing him down here um, towards Boots uh, Pharmacy and they cornered him outside and shot him. Aman had been released from prison just a week before the attack. He had been convicted of sharing terrorist material in December 2018 and he was jailed for three years, but he served only half of his sentence. Thankfully, none of the people Aman's dad died, but an Amaifad agent who was giving evidence at the inquest was accused of making the wrong call by not arresting Aman when he was spotted buying materials for a fake suicide vest. The Amaifad agent said that they felt the best way to manage the risk was to not arrest Aman, but keep him under close surveillance. Aman was originally from Harrow in North London. But at the time of the attack, he was staying at this bail hostel in Streatham. And it was just a few days before the attack, three days before the attack, that his mother Halima came to see him here. Uh, she said on that, on that occasion, he'd actually asked her if, if she could find him a girl to marry. Um, but uh, only, amazingly, you know, three days later, she hears that uh, there's been this incident in Streatham and he's been killed. The last time that she ever spoke to him uh, was on the day of the attack. And she remembers, uh, he said he was going to the local food shop to buy some groceries. And she, he said to her, bye bye, I love you mummy. Less than half an hour later, he had been shot dead by police after stabbing two people. 